So dear, uh, next one, let's talk about foreign body. Mainly occurs in uh, children, you know, if you keep a child with anything, a toy or a pen or something, if you come back after some time, the pen will be in the nose or ear, in the vagina, in the mouth, in the lungs, blah, 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 blah. Because don't leave any uh, newborns or infant or toddlers with a foreign body. Their reflex or their thoughts, like some, uh, they are anxious to taste everything, whatever. So normally, this foreign body we used to see in the ear as well as in nose. That's what we are going to discuss here. Other parts also we can have. In the ear, normally like some digital, they will put something in the ear. So we can see that. That can be always, of course, unilateral, only in one ear. And that foreign body can cause some bacterial infection. So they will have this ear pain and all complain. So normally diagnosis is always clinically. How you diagnose by clinical complaints. But in some adults and all, and kids also, some homeless people, or those who are changing the new home where the insects are common. Insects trapping in ear. That is very common complaint or common scenario we used to get. Imagine Ashik is coming, sir, 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 something is buzzing inside, something is irritating. Yes, it's an insect. There is a buzzing sound, something moving. There's an irritation, sir, irritation to the doctor. If you're a good doctor, don't take a torch and come and check or flashlight. Because insects already coming at the night because they don't like the light. If you put a light, they will go inside. Maybe they go to inner ear and you can die even. Complication. So never do it. So first thing, if you see the, like that, use some lignocaine, lignocaine drops. Right? Or lidocaine drops. So that insect get paralyzed, anesthetic. So easily you can use a forceps and take it out. So normally for this like foreign body, you use some forceps. Right? Or you do endoscopy if it's an esophagus, you are suspecting. Endoscopy or tracheoscopy, x ray. From the trachea, so tracheo endoscopy, tracheo endoscopy or forceps, whatever. Like, where is the foreign body you are suspecting? You will do an x ray and you will check it and you try to take by forceps or like other instrument. It's very easy for an ENT doctor. Sure. You are an infection, you will give antibiotics like amoxiclav and all. In the nose, now the main problem in the nose, we are talking about epistasis. It is bleeding from the nose, it will be bleeding. Normally in child and all, they will keep always their fingers in the nose. Again, unilateral, right? Put their like fingers in the nose or some trauma. So there is a damage to casal black plexus. There is a plexus inside the nose called casal black, casal backs. Plexus. You might have heard in anatomy, spinopalatine artery and all, they join to form a plexus. That will be damaged and you will have continuous bleeding, like bleeding. Whenever you see bleeding from the nose, what is what must be you are doing? You will ask the patient to lean forward. First thing, you will take to a or like a wash basin and ask them to lean forward. Then apply some pressure, hard pressure here, or put some ice. So first thing. Lean forward, then apply severe pressure there to stop the bleeding. Don't ask the patient to go backward. They will aspirate the blood and they can have what? Sudden death, my God. Then, and put some ice cubes, put ice cubes. Uh, after giving first eye, you find out is it anterior part bleeding or posterior? If it is anterior, Nothing else you have to cauterize. The ENT surgeon will cauterize it. Posterior just to give packing. Packing. But remember packing can cause infection. So like follow up, give them antibiotics. Don't forget to give what? Antibiotics. So that is the most common thing seen. Epistasis and ear infection. Next one. There is another condition in children normally called coanal atresia. You might have heard about it. Some child will be snoring while sleeping. Severe snoring. It's not an adult even. So snoring in children. So like a special case, right? Interesting case. Snoring in children. It means there's a block from nose to throat. There's something blocking their breathing. They can't get their oxygen inside the, like to the trachea, to the lens. There's a block there. 
So this scenario in Koyan atresia, Koyanal atresia. Normally, like the mother will come and say, doctor, my baby is like a, uh, they are doing magic. Sometimes my baby is blue, sometimes my baby is pink, not sometimes. Exactly they will say, tell me, if the nose and throat connection is lost, who will have to breathe? The mouth. So whenever baby uh, can't breathe through nose, they will try to, the kid try to breathe through the mouth. But when they are eating, they can't do it. So when someone is feeding, when the mother is feeding the kid, they goes blue in color because both mouth also obstructed now, nose also. But when they are crying, oh, opening the mouth and crying, at that time they again turned pink. So remember two color here. On feeding, they go blue. blue. When they are crying, they go again pink, like a magic, right? So to confirm it, you put a catheter, put a catheter through the nose. So it is hard to pass hard to pass. So you confirm it, so you go for a surgery. So snoring in children, think about what? Coenal atresia, epistasis, how to manage it, and ear, any foreign body in the ear, manage forceps or insects or whatever you manage like that. Thank you.